superconductivity is actually the most surprising phenomena which has most likely defined the scope of physics in the 20th century. Um, it all started, I will tell you what it is, but it all start, I will first tell you how it started. It all started at the beginning of the last century with a simple experiment. And this was done by Heike Owens, a physicist who was trying uh, to cool down matter. Um, he managed at some point to cool down matter down to the nano Kelvin. Um, at this point, people realized that by cooling down the material, you find new types of phenomena. And a very simple phenomena which was observed at this point was that a metallic state was obtained without any resistivity. What does it mean? It means that you take a material, you put a current into it, and that current flows with no dissipation, with no resistivity. This is totally against, at this time, especially in the context of the physics at the beginning of the 20th century, this was totally against the expected phenomenology. People would have expected by cooling down material to find a finite resistivity and to have some, some kind of dissipation in the material. So this was a very surprising uh, actually result, and actually the legend says that it was obtained by the PhD student of Owens, who actually kept cooling down the material, which was mercury at the time, and actually fell asleep during the experiment, and overnight, when he woke up in the morning, suddenly realized the resistivity was going down to zero, as the ex experiments kept going and going. This was literally the coolest place on Earth, and by cool meaning the, you know, the coldest. Um, but actually this was a breakthrough because people had a new phenomena to explain. You have to keep in mind that at this point of history, people thought in physics they had understood everything. This was the context of the Brownian motion derived by Einstein. And they thought that only small corrections would be obtained you know, in the future and that we understood everything. But it was also the most exciting times because people realized that to understand superconductivity, you had to introduce completely new ideas, completely new concepts, which down the line led to quantum physics, uh, to quantum technology, and still nowadays we are at a stage where we are, in a way, using some of the breakthrough made due to, the, due to this discovery. So it was a very important discovery. The understanding of this, con of course, physicists try to understand superconductivity, and the understanding of superconductivity uh, actually has not been achieved until nowadays. There is no clear understanding of superconductivity in general in materials. So why is it so difficult to understand it? Well, because it, it requires to understand quantum physics. You are at low temperature, uh, you have to understand the behavior of electrons in a material, and it turns out that these electrons are not behaving the way they should. What typically they are doing in a superconductor is actually decide, they decide to couple into pairs. Uh, electrons decide to form pairs, and instead of behaving as a single particle, the pairs, this electron pair, this duet, actually moves and actually have a dynamics in the material which is totally novel because they are not moving alone, they move as, as two, like two people dancing together. An analogy which is made sometimes is to explain that if you are a single electron in a material, you'll be like skiing on downhill and you'll be colliding against bumps as you keep going down. Uh, the idea of superconductivity is not just one skier going downhill, it would be like one skier above the slope in a mirror image of him down the slope and they would be holding and as they hit a bump, they would stick together and in a way manage to uh, avoid the resistance induced by the bump. So this is a picture that sometimes people have in mind. In terms of physics, more, let's say down to the level of details, what's happening is that the electron actually generates an interaction between them, which actually comes from the small vibration of the lattice of the material. So every material has a small vibration. This vibration introduces an interaction between electrons, and this interaction between electrons creates what we call Cooper pairs. This was all fine uh, and of course drove a huge motivation um, from experimentalists, from physicists, chemists to build new materials which have this phenomena and so we can, you can use it in our everyday life.
So what was a bottleneck and what prevents us today is to use this phenomena, so to have materials with no resistance. The bottleneck is that this phenomena disappears at a given temperature. It only works if you cool things down enough. If you have cold enough materials, you find superconductivity. Depending on which materials you look at, this phenomena survives up to some temperature, and we call this a critical temperature. So the big plan was to find new materials which have this phenomena up to a temperature as high as possible, such that you could use it in your car, in your fridge, in any application. So a big competition um, started across the world to find any possible combination of materials and to find the material with the highest possible critical temperature. And people try literally everything. Uh, until one day, in the 60s, uh, the motivation you know, at some point went down because the highest temperature found was in a compound uh, based on iodinium, which was about, let's say, uh, typically 20 Kelvin. So it's not a very high temperature, it's still very cold, and essentially to reach 20 Kelvin you need to use helium liquid. Helium is a gas that we don't have in much... Uh, it's a gas which is actually quite difficult to cool down. It is an expensive experiment to cool down helium liquid, so technically in terms of commercial application it's very limited. Um, so people actually at some point stopped being interested in that, and actually once they tried everything they realized, okay, that's the best we can do. And the field for um, after the 60s was a bit dormant. People didn't know what to try. Uh, until one day in Switzerland at Zurich, uh, Melnos and Müller found a way, which was very surprising, to obtain the best possible superconductor in a, look, in a material where you don't expect this kind of effect. They found superconductivity in a ceramic. What is a ceramic? A ceramic is something that is the least possible conductor. It's not conducting anything. It doesn't conduct heat, it doesn't conduct electricity. It's what you would use as an isolant, as an insulator, to shield uh, against temperature or to shield against electricity. So they took the worst possible conductor, they changed, its, they changed slightly its composition, and they found the best possible superconductor in history. And this superconductor at a temperature of about 35 uh, Kelvin, which was better than everything which was done before, but it was a new idea, finding superconductivity in a ceramics, which is a material where you don't expect superconductivity at all. This actually motivated physicists to try all possible combination of materials based on ceramics, and very quickly they found superconductors with temperature as high as 150 Kelvin. This was very important for application because 150 Kelvin is above the temperature, the transition temperature, when you cool, when you, you, you have liquid nitrogen. And liquid nitrogen is very cheap to obtain. So you have a very cheap way to obtain a superconductor based on a material which is based on copper and oxygen, a very simple material. This was a huge breakthrough. This is what we call high TC, high temperature superconductivity. Understanding that phenomena actually was a big challenge. There was a Russian physicist who was very essentially strong in that field at the time, um, Andrei Abrikozov, who actually was a theorist and before even um, this discovery was made, had made a prediction that in some range of material who are superconductor, you would have a new types of possible effects. Um, and essentially the idea was this superconductor would essentially behave in a way which is halfway between a normal material and halfway between a superconductor and especially it was predicting that this material would allow external magnetic uh, ex an external magnetic field to penetrate through the material but only in some region which are called vortices and it had even found the distance between these vortices and the geometry of the vortices and he was a theorist, he just made a very clever prediction for a long time this was not observed experimentally until um, experiments based on uh, scanning tunneling microscopy done in the rest of the world, in Britain, but also in the US, actually realized a confirmation of this very clever prediction made by Abrikozov. This is still nowadays called an Abrikozov lattice of magnetic flux lines going for a superconductor. So what are the big questions and challenges to understand this material? Well, until nowadays there is no 
full theory of high temperature superconductivity. So it is hard to tell what is the final answer to this problem. We know a few things. We know that superconductivity in this specific material, which are based on ceramics, are usually competing with other types of order, such as magnetism. And this is actually usually a problem. So nowadays we are trying to solve a simple question, how can we get superconductivity without this comp competing phase, which is a magnetic phase. So this is where we stand nowadays, and this is the challenges for the future to understand high temperature superconductivity.